Ryan with Biz.Geek Geek here, and in this video, we're going to take a look at this QRP uh, L Match tuner, and I'll put links below to the build of it. But right now, it's not working properly. Um, I am getting continuity from the center conductor of the PL250 or SO239 um, to the output because this is just a straight shot. All the inductors should either be bypassed with the switch or in line with the switch. So I should always have continuity going through these inductors uh, or their bypasses and into the output. And then the capacitor, it just goes across ground and output. It doesn't actually, like, it's not in line, it's in parallel. So um, it's, you're not going to change anything with that. But I've got continuity here, but don't there and don't here. I should be getting continuity on every single one of them, no matter what I do. There we go. So that switch might be a little bit iffy. So th this switch is having issues, and um, this is on the bypass side. So this is basically off, and these are on. So it uh, looks like when this one's on, it's bad, and when this one is off, it's bad. So we need to check the bypass on this one and the inductor on this one. So to do that, and this will show you how this is built, um, to, uh, temporary offline ham radio commented in a previous post where I was discussing marrying this SWR meter and power meter uh, with my tuner and he'd asked about the tuner so I thought I'd do a video and I'll I'll put links below to the uh, to the website that has the, a complete description by the way this was inspired by Peter Parker VK3YE he's an amazing uh, home brewer and QRP guru who has inspired me. He inspired me to write about it. He inspired me to build stuff. Um, he's just inspiration to all of us really. And if you haven't checked out his videos, please do. So let's take a look here. So remember it was th these two I was having problems with and oh yeah, that'll do it. There's the problem there. This one just broke off. And then the bypass on this one is what's is where the problem is. So what we can do, and when I, when I say the bypass on it, I'm just gonna get there we go. Um, the way this works is you've got an inductor here and a bypass. So these are all connected in the center conductor. So the set, there's all there's always going to be a path through these, whether it's through the inductor or through the um, bypass. And the bypass on this one is giving trouble, which could mean the switch itself is bad, uh, which is pretty likely. Um, these switches don't last forever in this role. These are not great switches. If I was to build this again, uh, I would probably buy some higher quality switches. These are just the cheapest you can get like on Amazon or eBay or Banggood or whatever. Um, and they're good for their purpose for just, you know, switching electricity on and off. But in this role, I've had to replace them already once and, uh, all, all five of them. And I've actually got some that I ordered. I might just pop another one in there, but we will see. But um, the idea here is you want these to be out of phase with each other or out, you know, just like not all lined up. That way their uh, magnetic fields don't interact with each other. So all I've got to do is tin this one and get it soldered back on here. And what you can do too is if, if you're going to really be really mobile with it and portable with it, is hot glue these. You just hot, Just add tons of hot glue so they don't rattle around. This one has spent copious amounts of time outside uh, when I had uh, an end-fed random wire antenna. So anytime I wanted to change my uh, band, I'd have to go outside, hook up my uh, antenna analyzer, and tune this for whatever band I was going to use, and then hook up, the, you know, it was kind of a, a rigmarole. So that's why I went, I switched to the end-fed half wave, and I got that one doing 40 um, 40, 20, 15, and 10. And I like that a lot better. I don't have to go fiddle with my antenna. For portable use though, this thing is still gonna be very, very useful. So I think my uh, soldering iron is probably warmed up. I, I knew I had a problem, so I pre-warmed here. So let's see if we can't uh, tin this guy up here. And by the way, these inductors, the way this works is they're not, they're all different values. 
The biggest one is uh, eight microhenries. The two next ones are four, two, one, and five. Or although I should say it goes eight, four, two, one, and 0.5 is what I mean. And if that sounds like binary to you, it is. Of course, the 0.5 isn't the same as a, you know the way a computer counts, but the rest are. The idea here is that you can count uh, just with these four, you can count one, two, or you have two of these on, you got three. Or if you put this one on, you got four. And then you have this one and it's five. And then that one is six and seven. And then you add this um, eight over here. And now you can turn all these off and get eight and then nine and go all the way up to, to 16 or all 15 with it, zero through 15. And then there's a 0.5 right here. So you have even finer, um, even finer uh, adjustment. And then this is a zero to 365, I think it's 365 or 325 picofarad um, the air variable capacitor. And that's just parallel with the inductors. So gotta get this in here. I think the easy way to do that is to be, just to prop this up here and grab my tweezies. Oops. You always want to do things the easiest way possible, which is pretty much means don't make YouTube videos while you're fixing things because it's really a lot harder. But that's the kind of the point here, isn't it? Okay, that didn't work. <laughs> this would be a whole lot easier if I was left-handed. I'm just going to have to be ambidextrous for the moment. In fact, what I'm going to do, I'm going to bend this. There we go. That way I can just hold that. In a perfect world, it would go through that little hole in the end of the, in the switch there, but that lug, but since when have we lived in one of those? Uh, okay, so now we can check the uh, continuity again. So all I'm gonna do is, since I've got it apart, turn on the meter here, and I'm gonna go to the output, and I'm gonna go to the input, and start flipping switches here. Oh, something ain't right. Maybe back connection. Let's see if this works. Nope. There we go. Okay, sometimes my amp, my uh, meter gets a little wonky. It's been really good to me. It's that Innova 3320 that I've talked about in other videos. This guy. I mean, this is the most accurate meter you can buy for 25, 30 bucks, sometimes less. You can't get a more accurate meter than that for this price. You, you, I've, you just can't. All right, but sometimes the switch is wonky. Okay, so we got that. So let's check. So our, our bypass, oh. Yeah, we got a bad solder there or something. So let's uh, warm it up and look at that. That was easy. All right, that's annoying. So now we got continuity throughout the whole thing and we have us a real L match. So now put these in like so, and then we're gonna prepare this thing for the long haul. So a real quick note, you might notice these are different size toroids. We got a T50-2, uh, a T37-2, a couple of those, and a couple of T30-2s. That's what I had on hand when I went to go build this. So that's what I used. Um, I just looked up, I used the, uh, I think it's toroids.info calculator that shows you, um, you know, how many turns for the size that you want, or for the size that you have, how many turns 
uh, to get the inductance you want. And so that's what I used to just use that calculator. So 8, 4, 2, uh, 1, and 0.5. And I think these both might both be 2. I'm not sure. I haven't looked. It's been a while since I built it. But, um, yeah, make sure you, you just use whatever you have on hand. And if, if you're only putting a few watts out, you can use the 37s. I just don't know if you can wind the 37s to get enough, uh, you know, to get 8 you don't necessarily need eight. I actually almost never use it. So you can probably get by with four, two, one, uh, or four. I would probably do four, four, two, one if I wasn't, if I didn't have the eight. So um, that way you have, you know, some variance. You can, four, four, two, one, you can, you can get pretty much all the inductance you're going to need. Um, so to really make this tuner ready for mobile, you know, portable use, uh, you know, taking it to a park or something. I'm, as I mentioned, I'm interested in, in uh, doing some parks on the air activations locally. At least, just I want to do it at least once or twice, just for fun. Uh, but to do that, I'm going to need to take this with me, and I can't have these rattling around. So I'm going to use my favorite tool. That's right, a hot glue gun. And so all we're going to do is I've got these t turned 90 degrees from each other, so they don't interact. And then I'm not going to just douse it. I'm going to aim for the spots that matter the most. So we're going to try to get right here in the middle. And just get the base of it. You don't really got to go crazy with it. Because if we're going to go crazy with it, we wouldn't use hot glue. We use crazy glue. And you don't want to do that. And beautiful. This should do it. We just don't want these rattling around, that's all. So just, uh, yeah, that's looking pretty good. As these cool, it's easier to tell. And this one's a bit bigger, so I'll use a little bit more. Maybe even add a little bit more here. And the stuff, the thing is, the stuff comes off so easy. You know, and these you might say, well, what if I, what if I break a wire on the toroid when I pull it off? Well, to pull one winding out and put it back, <laughs> it's no big deal. You lose a winding, you lose a winding. It's not we're not we're not doing rocket science or much science at all. We're just kind of banging things together, and it works. It'll be fine. Uh, I promise. Well, I am certain. I am confident it'll be fine. <laughs> So let's uh, gonna go ahead and get a little bit on the other sides here, especially on this one. I am gonna do this one because it's a lot bigger. But, uh, there we go. So that's that. And now these uh, aren't gonna be so wobbly. And all we gotta do is pop it back together, put the screws in, and we're ready for a lot more use, abuse, and uh, QRP tuning fun. So that's it for this video. Click. And <laughs> doing the old plastic click trick here before we put this all back together. But uh, that's it for this video. I'd love to hear what you think. Um, let me know if you have any questions about the tuner in the comments below. And make sure you go uh, check out the website so that you see uh, all the information about how to build this thing. Get some links to the parts. And uh, including this nifty box, which I got at Radio Shack when they were going out to business. So uh, that's it. Thanks for watching. And we'll see you next time. 73.